Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another live stream. This one is all about postgraduate international business. So if you are watching, please leave us a comment. Let us know your questions. Just say hi. We'd love to hear from you. Um, my name is Georgia, and I work in the Faculty of Business and Law, and I'll be your host, your host for today. That is not easy for me to say this afternoon. Um, I'm joined by academic colleagues, Associate Professor Martin Beckenstahl, um, let's start with the introduction. Over to you, Martin. Hello. Hi, Martin. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you? How are you? Roger. Thank you for inviting me today and giving me the opportunity, I suppose, to uh, talk a little bit about our PG sort of programs. But first, as you say, who am I? I'm currently program leader um, and associate professor within uh, the management and entrepreneurship department and program leader for the international business and management suite of programs which we'll sort of talk about a little bit uh, in a moment or two um, a little bit about me i've been at the montford university now for almost 20 years a long time. Um, uh, normally by now they'd be giving me a wooden spoon at this point. So I started as a new lecturer for the first time and have sort of made my way through lecturing, senior lecturing, and at no point in that 20 years have I ever known a year quite like this one. Um, this is probably the most unusual, extreme and different experience that we're all having right now. So everything just like it is possibly for some of you going into doing your MSc, possibly later this year. It's a new time for all of us. Um, my background, just to give you a very quickly a little bit of background, my research areas, and I'm a productive sort of researcher in innovation and small firms. Um, my original master's dissertation was on the decentralization of R&D, uh, the internationalization of R&D by uh, pharmaceutical, UK pharmaceutical industry. So it's very much internationally based, very much in line with the program that I am now program leader for an in international sort of uh, business management. Um, and so my background is very much based in the context of the program that I'll be speaking about a little later on. And just to say that I also teach on the program, I teach and look after the dissertation part of the program and the research methodology part of the program, which again is something I've been involved in all the way through my academic teaching, lecturing and research career. So, um, yeah, I've been here a long time um, and continue to be here a long time and um, looking forward to imparting some of what we do. Perfect. Thank you. That was a thank lovely you. introduction, Martin. Um, we've had a couple of comments already, so thank you very much for watching. Um, if you are 
interested in an architecture postgraduate live stream just keep an eye on the postgraduate live stream landing page we're constantly updating it um so hopefully there'll be one there for you soon i sadly can't help on architecture today. yes this is not Honestly, the... I, I sat in a, i was doing a phd viva quite recently and that was in international business but in construction interestingly so it was yeah so, but that's as far as i go in terms of architecture on the floor i can tell you nothing at all <laughs> i won't even pretend um if you have any questions about accommodation please let us know what you'd like to know and we'll either point you in the right direction or answer your questions um so i think let's start off with sort of an introduction to the courses that you are program leader for martin if you wouldn't mind just telling people a little bit about what they are as you say it's international business kind of the things they'll learn on them and then if yeah. i've got any questions i'll just jump in and ask you yeah sure sure I am program leader for the International Business and Management Suite of Programs. Okay. What that means is that the international business PG side of things within BAU, within the sort of management and entrepreneurship department, has five pathways. Hence why it's called a suite. Um, one of those pathways is management. There is also human resource management pathway, there is a marketing pathway, there is a finance pathway, and there is also an entrepreneurship pathway. So depending on your international business interest and also interest in sort of the direction of travel, maybe related to job or study interests, then you have these five options, these five pathways on which you can basically apply to one of those pathways within the program to choose marketing, HR, finance, entrepreneurship and management. So you have choices. Um, each one has very specific sort of elements in relation to its pathway. I think what I would say to start with is the international business element is covered across each pathway by a set of sort of core modules. Those relate to the more traditional sort of context of international business in terms of strategic management, in terms of some elements of people and organizations, accounting for managers is a module that is relatively not heavy finance, but it relates to international business accounting and finance elements that ma help managers make decisions. And importantly, also the research methods module, which, as I've already stated in my introduction, I look after because that gives you the background for your final part of your study. When doing a, a postgraduate degree, you invariably will end your pathway, your degree with either a dissertation, maybe in a BAL, a, an ECP, which might be a company project, but a project, a large research piece of work that you will do. On top of that, within each of the pathways, there are option modules. Each pathway has three or four options that you can choose from, which are specific to the subject of the pathway. Sub, you know, for instance, marketing. There is four, you've got a number of option modules there that including sort of strategic marketing that ultimately focus on that pathway's interest. HR, there are employment related options, there are human strategic human resource uh, options, etc. And it, so each pathway has a set of options that are specific to that pathway that allow you to pick and choose a little bit in terms of developing your skills and knowledge in particular areas of that pathway's overall sort of subject direction. So you have some elements of choices. And of course, that also follows through into the final project with the dissertation or possibly a business research project that ultimately you will focus on your pathways, context, marketing, finance, HR, entrepreneurship, management, et cetera. So the pathways, five pathways, core modules across all of them. Them, but then these key option modules plus one that ultimately focus on the pathway subject area very specifically, giving you those skills and developments, knowledge, background that will be relevant to that pathway's context. 
and focus. So I hope that gives a, a bit of an indication of what we do. Each pathway, basically you will have eight modules that you will take, including the option modules, and then a final sort of dissertation project that's worth 60 credits. So across the program, you will do, and I'll say it now, this may be a question that Georgia may ask later on, but I'll do it now, is that the programs run either from October or we also have a January intake. Um, so the October intake would be a 12 month program. Um, the January intake would be slightly longer, 15 month uh, intake. Each semester, and a semester is a term that would, for the coming semester, that would be October to December, beginning of January, would have four modules that you would take, okay? They would predominantly be the core modules. And then in your second semester, you will take your options and research methods. And then in your final semester, that may be either, if it's an October start you are, then your dissertation would happen over the summer. So next summer, that could be 2021 summer, you'd be doing the dissertation or the project. Or if you're a January starter, you'd be doing your project the January after finishing and completing in May 2022 now, if I'm being so if I'm correct, get my dates right. So there are two options, two entry points um, for each for each of the five programs. And again, sort of within that, it gives you sort of flexibility in terms of your choices and your options going forward related to your pathways. So I hope that gives a, a flavour in some some detail, I hope, to a to degree. hope that's helpful. Any questions, Georgia? That was it. Yeah, there was a couple. That was perfect. Thank you very yeah. much for the introduction. Um, so you mentioned you, I was going to ask more questions on sort of like the pathways, but I feel like you covered everything. As I say, we're here for like the next 20 minutes. So mm. if you do have any questions on any of those um, international business courses, just pop them in the comments. Yeah. Um, I, I, can I add one thing? I, I suppose because you mentioned you pathways, and I suppose just something I realised I didn't say in my pretty was within the core modules that you have. And there are sort of, if you like, sort of four sort of core, you know, not including the dissertation, you've got sort of four core modules, or five core modules, I should say, one of the, again, another one of those core modules will be specific to individual pathways. For instance, in marketing, we have international marketing, okay? That's specific to the marketing pathway. For no surprise, for HR, there is an international human resource module. For finance, there's international finance and so, so on. So there's very sort of clear sort of core modules that are specific to those pathways as well for students. So very sort of key, clear, be clear on that, that there are, you know, it's not just the options that are specific to your pathway. There are the odd core, there are core modules within that that also give you that. So importantly, there is a significant level of marketing, finance, HR, depending on your entrepreneurship, depending on your pathway that forms the basis of your overall master's degree at the end of it. Okay, sorry to... And you forgot to say something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. If you need to jump in and add anything, you add it in. I've been programming um, this for four years and I sort of... <laughs> Um, so one of the things that you mentioned is that students that are part of the international business suite have the opportunity to either do a dissertation or they have the opportunity to partake in the executive executive company project or a business research project um which we have we've had very positive feedback about that in the past and the kind of skills that it provides students um can you just give like a little bit more information as to what they are and how they differ slightly to the dissertation i think I'll, I'll be sort of clear on the sort of the the ecp doesn't fall directly into the the, the this business suite some of the other bow uh, and sort of management and entrepreneurship programs do have an ecp sort of option to them within this suite it is predominantly the dissertation okay which is the sort of main focus but then there is the sort of the development of the sort of brp which 
slightly different and it, it's not for everybody although it sounds on paper like it might be for everyone um is an option that um gives you access to companies now you're not working in a company um you are not specifically going to be turning up every day to do a sort of work you know related activity the the businesses that are involved in a brp process um have particular research issues business issues that they want research to be done on um, and that is then allocated out to interested students that are interested in undertaking the brp so it gives you some online and communication access with business owners um, but you are doing research for that business okay um, probably the biggest difference between the outcomes of a BRP and a dissertation are that you are presenting recommendations to a business. Whereas for a dissertation, that's very unlikely to be the case unless you have access to a company that might form the basis of your dissertation as a case study. Sometimes that, that can be the case, not always the case, but can be. So in other words, the sort of the purpose in part of the BRP is to provide, yes, an academic piece of rigor, just as you would have with a dissertation in producing research that is going to not only tell a story, but answer a particular research objective that the company has set, but importantly, provide recommendations potentially for that organization. And that can be quite valuable. But it's what's interesting is we don't see all students, I've got to be honest, it's sort of you know, the one thing about the sort of the BRP is that you know you are slightly at the hands of the company and what they want so it doesn't always give you the flexibility that you might want if you really are clear on what your research focus you want to be a brp may not be the option so it gives you some choices it gives you options depending on how you see your direction of travel in finalizing your master's program okay i hope that helps <laughs> sorry we're just having some issues there bringing me back on screen <laughs> sorry about just kept disappearing it's a live stream it happened <laughs> um so i think we've answered all the um questions that we had in the comments but as you say still here for another 15 minutes so keep them coming um and we'll put any to Mar martin that are relevant now martin because you have a suite as we've already spoke about mm -hmm. about um courses one of the um things that people always like to know is career prospects um so i'm going to put you on the spot a little bit with this one um and ask you if you can just talk about um briefly and this is going to test your memory as well and see if you can talk to us a little bit about the jobs that um i've got my list i've got my list, you've got your list. This is, i feel like we i feel like we put it's perfect <laughs> as long as we're giving the best up to date information um but when we get back on campus martin i'm going to take the list away and test you on it all <laughs> <laughs> so if you can <laughs> so if you can just yeah just say, if we can go through the programs and just talk a little bit about career prospects that students can go on to and if we've got any examples of students that would be perfect Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. I suppose it's one of those things where you know, I've been asked this question a number of times over the last sort of few months regarding sort of. You know, if I start with simply saying about sort of you know students on the programs, whether that's from, for instance, the international business and marketing sort of context, we've had students over the last couple of years end up as sort of in sort of roles with Amazon uh, working not only on their sort of digital marketing side of things, but also working as part of their sort of administrative sort of development teams. Um, we've had from the sort of management and HR side of things, students going in and working for international businesses like Toyota, as from, interestingly, logistics managers of all things, right through to sort of HR and uh, sort of uh, 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 sort of related sort of jobs within the sort of that context. So some of the, the sort of bigger names, but there's also, we have a lot of students, obviously international students, that will often be returning home, returning back to their home countries. And we have a lot of students that will 
are ending up in a lot of sort of roles working both in terms of from finance in accounts services with organizations locally as well as international companies in that context um, right through to sort of a lot from sort of HR going into sort of HR roles both in small and large organizations supporting sort of right from the, the early stages the administrative sort of starting points developing into sort of senior management roles you know over the sort of last couple of years more recently as well we've had sort of of all things a student who had a role has a job currently with amazon working as a of all things a talent acquisition um uh, within uh amazon which we don't specifically teach on the program so as you can see, I, I hope just from a, a brief flavor of some of the examples there across the different programs, what we see is students having, gaining a lot of skills and a lot of opportunities to not only see themselves just simply in a, a marketing pathway or a HR, but, but across a variety of sort of pathways and opportunities um, that lead into sort of jobs and experience. And within the program, you know, and I state this out, this is going to continue into next year, that we have always had inbuilt within the program the employability, the university's employability team, which is now business works going forward from this year embedded within the program as part we have a, 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 a module or that's not sort of a credit module there is a, a a module that is accessible to all students and that again will continue this year that gives you access to our sort of career side of things and our employability side of things within dmu and within bal to help support that process of developing your opportunities for careers both in the uk and internationally, depending on whether you're local or global. So, and that has continued throughout through the program from sort of year, you know, and that's why we've been very successful with students leaving DMU with the masters and having a lot of support from DMU through the program, as well as afterwards in obtaining the sort of jobs that I've just referred to. Um, and these are genuine sort of positions. Of course, we are about to go into a very strange period of time, and I do appreciate that. I think that's probably, and dare I say, this is me selling in our masters right now, is why this is a real opportunity for the next sort of probably year to possibly 15 months if you are thinking of choosing of starting in january that you have that opportunity whilst probably the world's job market is in a slightly different position than it was even just a few months ago that you have this opportunity to build those skills up to build and so that if we believe some of the speculation that the economies and jobs are going to start to rise again in 12 to 15 months time, then those opportunities are going to be there. Uh, and importantly, this will give you that opportunity to prepare yourself ready for those, those times to come and hopefully more positive times to come from a career perspective over the coming sort of year or two. Um, so I hope that, Gives a bit of a a little bit of a flavour. Some of them I did yeah. remember off the top of my head, but I must admit I didn't remember Amazing. them all, Georgia. I had Amazing. to sort of go. <laughs> no, no. As long as we are giving every, as long as we're telling everyone. Um, so what I'm going to do just now is because Martin, you have been speaking for a very long time. I'm just going to pop Martin off the st uh, stream, let him have a little bit of a drink. I think one of the most interesting things and the one of the most exciting things about the International Business Suite programmes is that thing that you're um, embracing two different approaches. And as Martin said, it makes you a very versatile student. And as he said, talking about the career prospects, possibilities are really endless. Um, so I did say I was gonna. I'm gonna just leave Martin off for a little bit longer. It won't be that much longer. Um, and we're now gonna talk about what our um, future is going to look like. So as Martin said at the very start of this, we are living in an extraordinary year that has affected all our lives and plans. And we understand completely what a significant year it is for you because it is for us too. It's very strange. Um, if you're planning to start or continue your higher education journey in 2020, we want you to know that DMU is here for you every step of the way. 
Your DMU future is our way of connecting safe campus living, quality teaching, one-to-one time with our academics and a great student experience, all within our diverse, inclusive and welcoming DMU community. We're committed to ensuring you that you get the extra help um, that you may need for your life, your work and your studies. So what I'd like to do now is obviously bring Martin back. I told you, Martin, I wasn't going to let you have that much of a break. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, Martin, if you can just um, basically just talk to us a little bit about how the um, sort of what the teaching and learning of the course is going to be like going forward in October. All right. So obviously, as stated, it is very different times and um you know the the sort of the normal approach of sort of two three hour lectures for each module in a classroom each week especially in semester one the starting point from october is not going to happen in that sort of that traditional way um mainly because of social distancing partly because of as we know, what we're dealing with. And the university sort of is guided very much by both government sort of requirements, et cetera, at the time and the local sort of situation. So at the moment, and this is at the moment, these plans constantly do evolve and change. But for semester one, we are very clear at this point and we don't expect this to change. We're not intending to change these. The, the way we're going to have sort of teaching. So per module, each module, there will be a blended learning approach. This will involve majority of online teaching, uh, live teaching, okay, uh, plus supported by some asynchronous, which is non-live teaching materials, content, videos, etc. But the live sessions will occur, but much like this, um, but students will be involved using our platforms, Blackboard Collaborate, possibility of use of MS Teams, etc., playing a role in supporting you and a face-to-face contact with a lecturer, tutor, seminar tutors on a weekly basis, not just once and then that's it and you won't see us again because it's all going to be all the materials just there online yes all the materials will be there online for you to access but you will have that face-to-face online access also on a weekly basis on each module you will also and and this is where the sort of the element of face-to-face comes in to a degree in semester one in the first term is that we have in place a plan for two sort of face-to-face sessions per module for students. So the first week of the, the modules running, there intent there will be a face-to-face class. Okay. A session. Again, these will be small classes. Okay. I'll make it very clear. I mean, if I put it in the context, normally the international business and management sort of just that pathway has anything between 90 and 120 students on it. We will not be having a class okay, of 190 students. The sort of the class sizes are going to be minimised, okay, depending on room sizes, depending on social distancing requirements of two metres, etc. So there'll be small classes, okay, face-to-face, obviously with all the usual protocols that are required in terms of social distancing and, of course, hygiene and everything else. Um, And importantly, to give students that sort of first engagement with the sort of module sort of in my case I'll be teaching research methodology um, this coming semester and that first class I will be doing live in a classroom with a with small groups so the class size will be broken down for individual class as you can imagine we'll be having a lot more classes in some cases Um, however that does not mean you do not get the appropriate content or the required learning through the process it does not change anything in that context, but we are adapting to meet the, the environment that we are all having to live and operate within during this sort of period. So there will be live sessions face to face online. There will also be an element of face to face, certainly once at the start of the module and midway through, because each module will run for 12, 11, 12 weeks. OK. So in other words, it gives you that opportunity both at the beginning and in the middle to have that 
live face to face, but also you will still have access to online content, online face to face live activities and classes. And of course, every student, as is the case and has always been the case at DNU, as program leader, also as a module leader, we provide advice and feedback sessions during the term time weekly. So you'll also be able to access in an online context for at the start of the program, module leaders, lecturers, myself as program leader or whoever, in an online face-to-face -face, and there'll be sessions set up. And these will be timetabled. They'll be available to you in your timetables. You'll be able to access those. So, you know, everything, although it will be different, you know, you will still have a university timetable. You will still have your classes timetabled and in, in you, you will receive a timetable at the start of the program. And, uh, and things will, yes, enabled slightly differently, but the delivery, the sort of requirements, the objectives, the learning outcomes and the access to materials, to academics, will continue. Uh, it's just we're enabling it in a very in a in a very different way at this point. Um, and some of that will continue, you know, through probably into semester two, um, maybe with. Uh, but we don't know what the plan is exactly for that. And again, we are waiting to see how the next few months um, and leading up to December sort of, you know, uh, how things happen over time. So we're we're always keeping things on, you know, under review. Um, one of the things that I'd like to add to what Martin said is, as he mentioned, that some of the lessons that you will be doing um, will be on campus and um, will be in seminar rooms and things like that. Um, our campus is at the moment undergoing a bit of a transformation. So yeah. we are having um, one-way systems put in place. We're also having hand sanitizer points across the campus. Um, and as uh, Martin quite rightly said, that those larger groups are going to be minimised massively. Um, and you will be, like he said, in smaller groups, but you'll be in larger seminar rooms. And that's just to adhere to yeah. social distancing rules. Absolutely. Everything that we're doing is to put in place to make you feel safe yeah. um, and feel comfortable coming back to university. Yeah. Now, Martin, you answered about four or five of my next questions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just answering all my questions. Um, so one of the, and it's great to hear, like we said, um, on campus, our academics have um, the opportunity to book in time with them during their surgery hours, but we also have the, um, like an open door policy. So would you say that academics are still available for students in that same way? That's a very good question. Um, I would say, I would say not in the sense of the, it depends how you mean what you mean by open door. Um, I think, you know, we are at the moment, you know, we are not going to, and I've got to put myself in this context. I'm diabetic. So, um, for me at the moment, the expectation is that I will not be having meetings in my office. I only have a two by two meter square office. That makes social distancing very difficult within that, you know, with one student in a room um, and myself. So, um, but open door will be the, the context of, we will be using various sort of technologies and systems. And that includes Blackboard as well as MS Teams and others, which will be software that students will all have of access to and will be available to them automatically when they join DMU, if you join. Um, that, that will give you access to make appointments, yes, to be able to access where that's online through and you can do that through your smartphone through your laptop through your tablet through your machine but also where there are where we are on campus at certain points and again we haven't had absolute clarity on when and where and how that's going to be done yet because there are still things being sort of set up and, and organized but there will be where there can be face-to-face -face sort of meetings as well but the sort of open door policy really becomes more applicable in an online context and again we we provide as i say already sessions where we're available and also other sessions but of course as i've stated before because the biggest difficulty this year if there is a if i'm being honest and i want to be as honest as i can is 
because where we are having sort of you know smaller group sessions, less large classrooms, even online, so that we can ensure that interaction, discussion, etc., works really well in an online context, that that has and does create more classes to be held. Of course, that means that some academics will have less time to be available because they're teaching you know, because they're doing more sessions, which is all about delivering the best experience in a teaching context. However, that does not mean that those periods where we will be available will not be available to you. We will be. OK, so it's but it's just setting the scene for the realities of 2020, 21 as it's coming. It's, it's just in, it's a different way, isn't it? Yes. It's very different to what yeah. we've done. It's um, going to be. I mean, so, normally I would be sat in my office and if you walk past, you could knock on the, just knock on the yeah. door. No, I, I, I think the only time I've ever turned a student away is because I've already got someone in the room I'm having a meeting <laughs> with, you know, so that, that would be, you know, and of course that's, and that's the probably the, the, the biggest, you know, I suppose for students, the, the, the problem is, because you're not able just to walk by and go and see if someone's there. Yeah. You, you know, online does make that a little bit more difficult in some ways because you can't, you know, it's, it's, yeah. but what we will, as I said, what we will be doing is making sure that, and we already do this in part anyway, as part of our normal processes is our timings, our availabilities, our expectations. You know, the, all these things are going to be posted and made available to you per mm. by each module, by the program, so that you will then know when, how, and how you can access each individual and teams of some pro some modules have teams on them that are yeah. operating across that module. So you'll have access to all of that information um, at, from the start of your program. And of course, if you're unsure queries, you've always then got the program leader to come and speak to, to sort mm -hmm. of follow up and to help with any issues that you have as well. And that's always the case across any program you do at DMU. The program leader is there to support you really and sort of in your personal journey across your, you yeah. know, your, your master's degree or whatever program you're doing. So, so, you know, and that, that doesn't change in this online context, you know, that job, that role, what we're doing, you know, does not go away because mm -hmm. we're suddenly all online and, you know, it's, it's, we're not there. Well, we are here, you know, yeah. we are here and we will be here, you know, yeah. from, you know, from the start of the new year, if not before. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, middle of the summer and I'm still, I'm dealing, I'm helping students out right now. <laughs> I'm doing that this morning, you know, yeah. on this program. And that's, that's what we do. That's what yeah. we do. It doesn't, change. it doesn't go away. Perfect. Thank you so much. I've got I've got about three more questions for you, Martin. Okay. Um, so the next question that I'd like to ask is, is there still the opportunity, and you've mentioned it, how students work together. Is there still the opportunity for students to collaborate together and still work together just in an online form, in an online way? Is that still available? Yes, that will happen. That will I, I, one of the, one of the key things I was mentioning there in terms of the smaller, even online class sizes. We're not going to have mm -hmm. two hundred students turning up to an online lecture. What we're going to be doing is those online sessions will be a maximum of thirty students. Within that, sort of within our sort of our blackboard system and our tool, we we'll, we will be within those. Say, for instance, a, a two you know an hour session or a two hour session that's live online. There will be breakout sessions. There will be group group work that they can do. Absolutely, the the group thing does not just suddenly go out the window because or the ability to engage with others, the ability to engage with your cohort and the students that are on your cohort uh, in your sort of degree. That will continue, you know, it's just going to be in a slightly, you know, we just won't necessarily always be in a classroom sat around a yeah. table with each other. Instead, yeah. we'll sat in a virtual room, sort of breaking out. And, and actually, what's great about the tools that we have with our software is that you can be in a group, but you can also create sort of situations where students can jump around groups. So there's real oh, interesting yeah. game yeah. management the options that things that, can happen in a classroom, but as you, if you're in a classroom, you know, if you suddenly have people getting up and moving around and it's, it's a real pain. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always work that well. Yeah. In an online context, it can be very quick, easy, and it doesn't, it doesn't actually affect, and it can really make some dynamic in for some of the assessments that are going on and some of the work that you'll be doing, some of the workshops, you're, it offers an opportunity that mm -hmm. sometimes in, I hate to say it, and I shouldn't say this, should I? But in in a face to face in a classroom situation, aren't always as easy to achieve. 
Yeah. So it gives us real opportunities and, and innovative opportunities that, you know, weren't always there previously, um, mm. you know, and so or were there, but because we had to be in a classroom timetabled in this and because of the room we were in, you couldn't do it. Yeah. Oh, well, but now we can. And it's, so there's there's a lot of us and I include myself in this as a you know doing research methodology and just things that we could do. And I've been doing a little bit at the because we've overlapped with the online offline sort of context uh, for the last term. I've been able to do things that I was able in a small way to do in the classroom, but now can do in a much more reactive, proactive with students actually working on things live while we're having workshops and actually being able to inter interact directly both in small groups for students both in teams just individuals working in teams mm. doing things and creating things in real time that can then be shared and discussed across everybody you know and, and, and then can also be shared later on in the next session and made use of again and we can we can develop those and and everything stays in one place nicely and you can react you can access those at any point and this mm. is what's going to be quite nice about the classes that you'll be out of access although you'll have timetable classes your classrooms and your groups that you're in you'll be able to go into those at different points even outside of the timetable times of the, yeah. the modules which will also be possibly something that wouldn't normally happen in a in a more traditional timetable situation yeah so it gives us some creative opportunities that weren't always available to us in the you know in the old approach that we had you know and i'm, I'm looking i'm looking forward to it i really am I was going to say you're so, you're selling me on it. It sounds well, very I, I it sounds really you know, having had a little bit of experience yeah. of it in the last few months, I know how valuable yeah. and how how you know and the reaction you're getting. You know, I'm getting from students is, you know, it's it's a real sort of. But, but of course, it does mean you've got to you got to be involved in it. Yeah. You know, that's the important thing. You know, and get it get involved, and that's that's all we ask. You know? Yeah. I hope to, it will be an exciting time. Should be. You're mm. doing your masters. It's you know. I think it's if if that's what you're choosing to do, then it should you know make the most of this amazing opportunity. Um, my final question to you, Martin, is what advice would you give to any students that are thinking of joining us or joining us um, this September? What would your advice be? Oh, there's a that's a very <laughs> good question. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's a hard one to answer in terms of I suppose my advice at, at this stage is you know it, some some basic ones make sure your your, your technology is all prepped and ready to go um, make sure your laptops up up to date or whatever whatever system you're using um, but I think more importantly get as much information as you start to apply um, get as much information as you can through um through the admissions office but also through what we, you know what's online in terms of the programs be be sure that you are because obviously in my program there are pathways management finance hr marketing entrepreneurship be as, as sure as you are that you are taking the right don't just take the program for the sake of taking a master's program because when you, you know, my view always is for any master's student is that you're you're wanting to study because you want to develop you want to improve your knowledge yes your skills your opportunities for jobs but the worst thing you can do is take a program and this is not me trying to put anyone off not taking this but but take a program that actually doesn't interest you that isn't your subject so there are five pathways here there are some clear choices and not you know and we hope some some choices that will offer a variety to all of you but don't just simply think that that's you know i should do that because i just need to do a master's degree you know choose a pathway choose a choice that you really are interested in that you really want to you know to undertake and if you have questions about those pathways if you have queries about that i know you know later on joy yeah i think i will share my sort of email address and various other bits you can ask me questions about the sort of programs and the course content in in more detail then i'm happy to so do your research know exactly what you're getting yourself into 
you know, I've given you some idea of that today, but be sure it is right for you as a as an interest. You know, the worst thing you can do is study when you're not interested in a subject, you know, and it may seem obvious, but it it is something that can lead to outcomes that aren't always the most positive in the end. So do your research. Yeah, um, yeah, the fact you're here today is part of that. And thank you for being here today and engaging in that process. Um, as Mod said, if you would like more information about the International Business Suite of courses we offer, there is a um, banner that's yep. going across at the bottom. If you follow that URL, um, that will tell you all the information you need to know. Um, as Martin said as well, what we're going to do is we're going to pop his email address in the comments. Um, so if you do have any further questions that, that aren't answered on the course page, please feel free to get in touch with Martin. He will be happy to help you. Um, and as you can see, is very knowledgeable about everything to do with international business. <laughs> um, well, that is all we have time to, to time for today. So I'd like to say a massive thank you to Martin for joining us. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, you, and a huge thank you to everyone that has watched, everyone that has left a comment, um, asked any questions. We really appreciate it. So have a lovely rest of the day um, and we hope to see you at DMU soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye all.